automation, RPA. When you're looking at the world of agents and AI, are you still using automation or are you saying everything AI and everything agents? What do you what do you guys see in your in your spots? What is a a partner like maybe IBM? Like what are you what are you consulting over there? What's your what's your, I think we usually go for a hybrid model, uh, Doug, right? Combining RPA and adding AI on top of RPA. So it's like uh, AI is the brain, right? And RPA is like the body, <laughs> if you will. Uh, we use RPA for like uh, more uh, structured data tasks, like let's say form filling, right? And I work for a healthcare client where we use RPA for like data entry and form filling. But we use uh, AI for like uh, chatbots where it can tailor more uh, um a uh, personalized experience. I think with uh, AI agents, right, I think the advantage is even if the data is not structured, right, it can go through emails, it can go through images, it can, it can go through social media, it can judge the sentiment, right? So I feel like using both together and if you're only using like uh, Gen AI or uh, RPA, I think uh, AI agents will work very well seamlessly uh uh with those and i think uh together i think they will provide like a much better uh customer experience as well i agree with kaparna because we live in the world of distributed systems right we don't know what components work in what way but we need an environment with, which works dynamically rather than working on a preset uh, predefined rules or preset of instructions yeah so can, can i be controversial here now for a moment uh, yeah. Yeah. Tomorrow, if you don't know, the history history is a great educator. And if we look at the trillions of dollars that have been spent on digital transformation in the last two decades, most of it has not worked. It has been suboptimal. Uh, and a lot of it is because, you know, it was just technology solutions being implemented into organizations. Uh, and I think we're at, you know, we're we're at an interesting juncture in AI where, you know, we've gone past you know, the experimentating, you know, writing poems with Gen AI and things like that. And firms are now starting to look at pilots and whatnot. But the, the key here is, if we just think about this as a technology overlay into a business, we've missed the whole point. And we will end up repeating the same problems that we've had for the last two or three decades. So I think this is about fundamentally rethinking your business, rethinking your organization, and rethinking what it means to be relevant and competitive in the future. And, and that's why it's not just a use case, Chase. 100%. That, that's why when people talk about use cases, I'm like, hold on, you're thinking about this wrong. Um, but Jessica, are you seeing the same thing on the fractional side? Like, where's the win there? Do you do you chase the use case? Or I mean, sometimes you got to deal with the customer. Right? Sometimes the business is so <laughs> static. They're like, we want just the thing. Like, no, no, no. But how do you drive that? I mean, I think 90% of any kind of consulting work is really client management. Let's be honest. You're yeah. <laughs> You're really an uh, 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 underqualified therapist for everybody. So there's always those people who, who come and they say, well, I just think if we got an agent, it would solve all the problems. Or, you know, I just think if we just we just use this, it'll solve all the problems. And I was thinking about if I just fired all of my receptionists and I could just replace them with agents. And it's just like, no, <laughs> you know, this is, again, and that's why I keep saying it's not like a broken record. What's the actual problem it, I can think of 10,000 use cases, right? And I can pick out almost any program that is one specific use case. And I could probably use it for five other use cases, right? So it's, it's sure, there's use cases everywhere. But what is the actual problem that we're looking to solve? Or if you don't think you have a problem, that's fine. What are your backlogs? Do you have an operational deficiency somewhere, right? Do you have any kind of, you know, are you, are you, because you get more money, right? Do you need more leads? Are you having trouble raising the price of your service? There's some, there is something that can be improved upon, even if you don't see it as a key problem, if that's not why you're talking to me. So, you know, when people come to me, that's usually, this is my one problem. I want to solve it with AI or AI is the future. And I want to be the guy who's ahead of my competition. And, you know, I used to think that the, the person who had a problem they wanted me to solve was the best person. But I find that sometimes it, that they realize that they don't realize that there is a bigger issue. It's a bigger right. issue. You're, right. you're not using the existing softwares correctly, as, as, as already been mentioned, right? You don't have a CRM and you're not using it. Then adding AI to your CRM isn't going to help you at all. Use your CRM. Okay, That's so a real issue. Yeah, <laughs> right? I'll, I'll get on down straight. 
Yeah, if you're not if you're not looking if you're just focused on the front office and money comes in and where the deals are done, great. That's where that's where the money is. But the back office is usually major in disarray and needs to be resolved. And so, but the the comment I was talking about when it came to automation and agents is agents are still using tokens, just like on the yeah. LLM side. And and tokens cost money. And over time, many of the enterprises I've seen and, and talked to and consulted with are basically saying like, hey, after three to six months, it's costing a lot of money. I don't know if I'm getting the value, right? And so there's that side. And then there's the automation side where you you control the, the license's cost. And then it just kind of like you get works and you can get focused on the ROI. But how are you, how, how is everybody here seeing that kind of mix? Like, are you seeing that cost go up? Are you seeing that visibility? Are, are you looking at building dashboards into like, what does that look like? Maybe Dr. Tony, are you teaching? Are you, you do a little bit of like the knowledge training, right? So like, yeah, I, I, yeah, I do a little bit of everything on this, on this uh, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. spectrum, right? So um, a lot of research, a lot of, a lot of teaching and on the AI cam side, it's, you know, as far as costs, and and the one thing we haven't talked about is the energy use in, in, in this whole thing, which also um, drives up the cost. Uh, there has to be um, ways to to minimize that, and and it's not enough research that has been done in that in that space to 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 address that. You, know, you look at tokenizations, and you look at um, the ability to, to run on um, the, the, all the um, Cloud platforms like AWS, Azure, and, and, and folks like that to be able to scale um, and, and faster based on what you, your use will be. I think that is a, a good way to go because you can control your cost based on the scale and, and what the, what these um, hyperscalers give you. So it's just uh, it, it comes back down to your, your technology strategy, un- understanding your um, your technical debt and your um, in in your whole tech stack for what you're doing holistically in your company and where do you fit, where does AI fit based on what Jessica is preaching and, and I'm, I'm buying all, all the way to the bank is your business problem yeah, that you're trying to solve. So uh, that is going to help you control some of those calls, but you got to come in with your eyes wide open because the, the cost factor is the environmental piece as well, which we have to make sure we take a look at. Yeah, and on that cost factor, right? It's a matter of like, if you're doing a thousand PDFs every day and your people are doing that with agents, it's going to cost a lot of money. But what if you build in that automation? What if you take a part of like the IBM side of that, of what she said and said, hey, let's use use what you need when you need it because there's going to be cost savings there. And so I think that's where with the takeaway here is that we can give people. And other than that, um, I, know, I know it was real quickly, but I know we were talking about SaaS. And I wanted to get everybody's understanding and, and feedback on like, is SaaS going away? Is software as a service going away? And it's becoming more agent as a service. Anybody want to chime in there? Yeah, I, I, I think it is. Yeah. Go ahead. I think all of us jumped in on that. Uh, go for it. Yeah. Everybody say, work it is. <laughs> uh, it's a good marketing term from selling S-A-S-S to selling A. <laughs> Don't say it. I think, you know, I've seen many interviews recently where they said that SaaS is dead, right? I'm sure even you guys have seen. Uh, you know, CEO, yeah. You know, yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, I have a, you know, like extensively with SaaS and I do believe that AI is uh, fundamentally changing the way I think uh, the SaaS tech stack is, right? Like it's uh, uh, reimagining like uh, workflows, uh, chatbot conversations. Um, So I think SaaS as we know it today uh, will not have the same definition, maybe even like uh, one year down the line. Uh, so I do believe that it's going to change a lot. 